Right, today we're talking about the six-wheel drive Ambo, and I'm going to even kneel down here. Because of a licensed suspension that's going to last a few months, we're going to put this guy into mothballs for a little while. So uh, we're going to put a charger on. A little bit later on, we're going to put a 12-volt solar system on the 12-volt side of things. 24 volts fine, it's got plenty of solar power, but we need to protect the starting battery. So we're going to run a lead out to it. Alright, now in most vehicles what I do is I put a uh, an Anderson plug permanently attached to the battery and most stuff I've got can plug into that including solar systems. Victron is a little different though. This has one of these connectors but fortunately in the box they come with a set of clips that attaches to it. I have a few of these uh, female sockets that I've got attached to most batteries I use. This is one of the um, Victron Blue Smart chargers. You can link it up to your Bluetooth uh, on your phone and use the app to see what's going on. I don't really need to use that very much, uh, but these are very reliable chargers and they're good maintenance ones. They're a multi-mode. After a while, it'll put itself into storage charge, so you can safely just leave this and do its own thing. But uh, we are going to hook this up and hopefully see if we can get onto one of these terminals with a reasonable connection. These probably need to clean off. This uh, time in mothballs will give me plenty of opportunity to clean up a lot of stuff. We're going to plug in our charger first and the mains second. There's a few reasons for that. Now we are going to find a spot for this to hide under the bonnet. It's going to be here for a while. On top of the turbo is probably fine. Although I don't want to. Let's do it on top of the intake manifold maybe. I don't want to uh, come out and accidentally start this thing one day and chew up my charger. Might sit it on top of the intake manifold and we'll just rest the bonnet shut. We'll plug our charger in. Now yeah, we should see it go through a test mode here. Light this up for a moment and it'll walk through a couple of other things. It'll probably decide on what it needs to do. I'm going to guess it's going to go to bulk charge after it finishes its test cycle. I had a bit of a break. Uh, the local earth movers stopped in to check out the vehicles, which is all right. Now I've repositioned this onto one of the uh, auxiliary posts. Hopefully we get a better contact on here this time. We'll see what happens. We'll go into test mode, I assure. I assume. Language is not working well today. On test mode, it's switched to normal 14.4 volt mode. Hopefully our test won't take too long. We're going to skip this bit. One thing we can check here is the hydrometer. This is usually just attached to one cell. But uh, we can see here it's clearly in the recharge battery zone, which we kind of knew about. So, uh, yep, hopefully our thing's gone on the bulk charge by now. And yes, a reposition the terminals has gone on the bulk charge. Okay, let's check in the cabin. All right, a little while ago I installed a dual voltmeter. So this is a 24 volt system, is at 27.3. This is now 13.6. It was 12.2 earlier. So uh, we'll leave that sit and charge up for a couple of days until it goes on to storage. And uh, we may still take this for a drive, but uh, I won't be driving on public roads for obvious reasons. But uh, my financial manager, she can drive me off the public roads onto some private property, then we can drive from there and get all the B-roll we need, at least for the next three months. Now we're just going to leave the bonnet sitting like that so we don't crush the charger. But hopefully that'll be good. I know this is a simple and short video, but sometimes the basic maintenance is something that I can't understand how people don't think to do. And this is one of these things I mentioned to a couple of people. I've got a moth bullet, I'd better put it on charge. And a few people went, why would you possibly do that? And uh, this is one of these things. These vehicles do occasionally get mysterious, current drains, and they go flat. The Forby that's hiding in its hole over there, it has had a mysterious one quarter amp drain the entire time I've had it. And of course, every time I start speaking, we have RAF aircraft overhead and Carawong's having an argument. It's, it's always interruptions. Anyway, yeah, this one, uh, at some point, what I'm going to do is show you how to track down 
those uh, mysterious loads. It's taken me about eight years to get around to it, but uh, we're going to have some downtime, so I will sort that out as well. And in any case, uh, have a comment below, see if you tell me. Uh... In any case, um, leave a comment below and tell me if you want to know about that. So uh, I'm going to start doing all the basic niggly little things, and then I'm going to start doing wheel bearings. There's 20 of them to do.